All right, y'all, welcome back. My name is Emily Taylor, and I am one of your trainers here at Pragmatic Works. And in this video, I am going to uncover a few more Excel functions that you could use as a sales manager to sort, organize, and filter your items within a spreadsheet. And be sure to stick around until the end because I'm also gonna be showing how to build a drop-down list to make these functions even more dynamic. And finally, if you're interested in following along, you're able to click the link in the description below and download a copy of this free worksheet template so that you're able to practice right alongside with me. Let's go ahead and get started. One small thing I wanna talk about before we begin is this information here. As I walk through the functions today, you'll notice that I'm going to be using these dollar signs to lock in some cells in place. Essentially, if a cell is relative and doesn't have dollar signs, it can be adjusted based on the cell's position whenever I copy or drag a function. Uh, whereas those dollar signs make cells absolute, and absolute uses those dollar signs to lock in rows, or columns or both regardless of where it's copied. So you're gonna see that as I go through. I just thought this slide would be helpful in explaining what exactly I'm doing when I'm adding these dollar signs to my cells. Let's head into the spreadsheet and go ahead and get started. As you see here, I've got a list of items that I've sold in a souvenir shop that is a, from a Tiger baseball stadium. In this instance, I want to rank my items based on my top sellers. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into the cell that I'm going to be ranking and I'm gonna use the equal sign to initiate a function. And I'm gonna start typing in rank. When I type rank in, I've got three different options that pop up. I've got rank, rank EQ, and rank average. Rank EQ is my personal favorite and the one that we're going to be exploring today. In the rare chance that we will have an item that has the exact same quantity sold, rank EQ is going to be the function that I want because it's going to return a rank that is identical for that item, whereas average will return an average instead. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click tab to open that function up. And the first thing that I need to do is I need to identify what number I am trying to rank all of that number against all of the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the cell that I'm trying to rank. I'm gonna put my comma in, and then I'm gonna put my space and decide what cells I should be referencing. So I'm gonna rank that G3 cell against G3 all the way to G27. It looks like these mixed up a little bit, so I'm actually gonna go back in and type in my G3 and my comma and delete it from the end. Now, the last thing that I wanna do is I would love to drag this rank function all the way down so that I can rank all of my items. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and stick my cursor right between G3 and click the F4 button to lock that cell in place so that as I drag my function, these do not drag further down. Same thing here, I'm going to click F4 right on top of that G27, and then I'm going to close my parentheses and click Enter. And as you'll see, this Tiger Possum Foam Finger sold 150, but that was the 12th, ranked 12th in the list of items that were sold, and I'm able to drag that rank down now and it's working because I locked those cells in place. So as you can see, this one sold 300. My tail swag keychain was a number one seller. Moving right along, the next function that we're gonna cover is called the unique function. And this function is great if you have a long list of items that you're selling and you're just trying to figure out what am I selling what type of items, I don't want a list of 27 items to look at, I just wanna know how many item types am I selling and or what are the item types that I'm selling. That being said, I am going to get a list here by using the unique function. I'm gonna start typing it in, scroll down and click tab to open up that parentheses. And I need to choose the column that I would like to get my list from, which is my item type column right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and close my parentheses and click enter. And just like that, I have a list of every single item type that I have for sale inside of my souvenir shop. 
All right, the next function that we're gonna talk about is sum if. I want to get a total for each of these unique item types. Rather than getting a total for each separate item, I wanna know how many accessories I sold, hats I sold, and so on. So we're gonna use the sum if to help us out here. I'm gonna start typing in sum if and tab to open it up as a function. The first thing I need to do is where do I want to get my information from? Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab the cells in my item type and I'm gonna click F4 to lock these cells in place so that when I drag this formula down to my hat, my clothing, and my food, it will not slide the cells that I selected down as well. Then I'm gonna put in my comma and I'm going to say, if these cells match what I've got going on in J5, and I'm gonna go ahead and just click on it to make it easier, and then put my comma in, and then say, then I would like it to sum these numbers. So now I put a conditional sum here where it is only gonna look for the word accessory and then it will add the number that is inside the quantity sold column. Again, I do wanna lock those in place so that it doesn't slide down as I move that function using that F4 key and close my parentheses and click enter. And just like that, you can see I've sold over 2,000, close to 3,000 accessories. I'm able to slide this down to extend that same function. And as you see, I can click on it. You can see that the cells that I locked in place, they did not move. However, the cells that I did did not lock, this J, originally I had J5, but as it moved down, that one actually adjusts down with the rows. All right, let's go ahead and head over to the next tab where we're gonna start talking about the filter function. So as you saw on the previous page, my accessories had a much higher item number sold compared to the rest of my item types. So I would like to get a list of just my accessories. So what I'm gonna do is use the filter function to help me figure that out. I'm gonna click into the cell where I want this table to copy in. I'm gonna pick the top left cell of the table and I am going to use the equal sign to start typing in filter. Go ahead and click tab to open up those parentheses. Now, the nice part about this is I am able to go back to my report page and grab my data from there. It does not have to be from the page that I am currently on. You'll notice that it does identify the report page with a little exclamation point, but let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Go ahead and click on report. And you'll notice it starts typing in that word with an exclamation point and we are gonna grab all of the cells that I want to have my filter function search through. So. I want it to bring in all of the data here in this table, use my comma. I want it to include the information if this column right here, and again, I'm grabbing a column straight from this report table. If this column is equal to the word accessory. Now, of course, it is important that you spell it correctly and it is case sensitive, so make sure you do spell it correctly and it matches what you've got going on here in that original table. But once I've got it finished, I'm gonna head back over to my filter by item and I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. And as you see, it went ahead and returned a list of every single accessory that I have. And I'm able to go through and analyze my data a little bit more by identifying the rank of the items sold, how many items were in fact sold, and all of those things that come along with it. All right, and for the grand finale, let's talk about how to build a drop down list within Excel. As you see, I have went ahead and built another menu very similar to the one up above where I've got an item name with my total sold. Now, I identified my list of items 
from the unique function, but what if someone were to type in that information in my item name? I just told you that Excel has some case sensitive information. So one way to eliminate the opportunity for error in typing or case situations is to build a drop down list. We're going to build a drop down list of all of the different items that I have here. And the nice part about this is once I use that sum if function, when I change my item from my drop down list, it will go ahead and change my total based off of what item I have sitting in this box. So in order to build a drop down list, we want to go to the data tab up in the ribbon up at the top of our page and we're going to look at data validation. Go ahead and click the drop down for data validation. Again, we are doing data validation. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to allow a list. Go ahead and click on list and we've got to identify a source. Now, this is where you could go here and type in the list or my personal favorite is just grab the cells click into that box first <laughs> and grab the cells that the list should be matching. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And now you see we've got a little arrow here where we can open it up and we've got a list of our items that we can choose from. So we've got accessories here and I'm going to go ahead and build that sum if formula again or as a matter of fact, I think I can just copy and paste it and just like that because I had locked those cells in it was able to bring that function in here all right we're gonna go ahead and change it up just to see that it works if it says a hat we've got 325 items sold versus clothing and last but not least our food Using drop down lists not only speeds up the process of getting the filtered lines that you need, but it also ensures data validation, eliminating any chance of errors. That's why I personally believe that pairing drop down menus with a function that is going to rely on what is written in a cell is just best practice. What validation techniques do you use to eliminate errors? Share your tips with me in the comments. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to us here on this YouTube channel at Pragmatic Works. And you can tune in for a full free Excel tutorial on our on-demand learning platform at pragmaticworks.com. This course is titled Excel Beginner to Pro and it's definitely something you don't wanna miss out on. And if you haven't already, joined us in our on-demand learning by getting a license, you can click the link below with my special promo to get 40% off of your license today. Once you're finished with that free beginner to pro course, you can start using your license that you purchased to watch our Excel fundamentals video, which will also be found in our on-demand learning platform. I can't wait to read your comments about your data validation techniques and stay tuned for more Excel content from me.